Okay, so um, I'm going to describe all of the cross sections uh, of uh, of this thing. And we've got so we've got a, a surface that's described by this equation, and specifically, one would see the cross sections perpendicular to each of the three axes. So all of so it's every every possible way to do this. Okay, z equals x y. Okay, uh, first, if we take cross sections uh, perpendicular to that was unfortunate. Now, if we take cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis, right? Okay. Well, perpendicular to the x-axis means I'm setting x equal to various constants. So my equation z equals x y. That was the equation we were given there. Z equals x y. Uh, that turns into well, let's see, x is a constant, and so what we get is uh, z equals a constant times y. So I get a bunch of lines of varying slope in these uh, in these planes. So um, a bunch of planes like that, and whatever this c is, uh, whatever the c is that tells you which plane you're in, that c tells you the slope of the corresponding cross section line. Does that make sense? Okay. So we could try to draw some of these, and uh, this is a tough draw. Right, so forgive me for the bad art that's about to follow, but um, in that plane, c is equal to zero, because this is the plane x equals zero, and c equals zero means my slope is zero, which means I get a line like that. Okay, next, move over, you know, in positive x direction. Uh, the uh, c gets larger because x is now a larger value. That means the slope gets larger. And this line is going to be, you know, uh, oh, that again, unfortunate. Um, larger. And then as you move further and further along, you get these higher and higher slopes. The more you come out of the screen, right, the, the steeper the line is. Okay. Everybody happy? So the lines are mm -hmm. in the x-y plane? Oh, well, well, now these lines are all in different different planes. Um, uh, they, uh, for example, they might be in a plane like this one. This is parallel to the yz plane. Of course, the yz plane is over here where x equals zero. Mm -hmm. right? um, so it, it's, this isn't the yz plane, but it's parallel to the yz plane. And you can see the equation involves y's and z's. So why describe this? It will be a line with the slope of c. A line with a slope of c, yeah. So, in in planes, in these planes, okay. you have these sloped lines. Okay. Yeah, right. Thank you. Right, cool. Uh, okay, analogous for the other directions. Uh, let me clean up my mess here. Let's look at. Uh, whoops. It's still z equals x y. Uh, but now let's look at. Um, in the y direction. So let's suppose <coughs> I'm looking at a plane like that. That's where y is equal to c. Okay, well y equals c results in an equation z equals cx. So again, I get these sloped lines, and the slope increases with c. So the more that the cross section plane moves to the right, the more that the resulting slope increases. Right? And so, um, you know, for example, you're going to get that when c is equal to 0. For a slightly larger value of c, you get something a little bit more sloped. For a larger value of c, you get something even more sloped. And the more you move over, the steeper it gets. Kind of hard to, kind of hard to visualize. Yeah. Everybody good? Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So then lastly, um, it's a little bit different for the third one. Lastly, we're looking at planes perpendicular to the uh, to the z axis. Here's where z is equal to c. That now goes into there and gives you c equals x y. So these are not lines, right? These are hyperbolas. You know, remember way back to Algebra 2? 
and xy is a constant that makes a hyperbola so um, yeah you get these different hyperbolas of um, that have been magnified by you know more or or less so for example um, um, oh, this is doing a tough draw um, okay let me try it again um, So that's supposed to be a plane. Gosh, I really could have done better than that. Let me try this. Let me do this a little better. I think that's better. Better. Okay. So um, this is a plane perpendicular to the z-axis at some value c there. Right? Now let me just for my own artistic convenience, let me draw a little guide line. That's that's sort of the x-axis ish right in that plane and then likewise I need this little cheat line here and so the hyperbola is going to be something kind of like this if you go higher up then again cheat lines let's say I'm uh, Um, it's not going to look exactly the same. C is larger up there, right? And that means the product of X and Y is larger, which means the hyperbola is going to be kind of what you might call bigger. I mean, it's going to be farther away from the origin and, you know, et cetera. And then, of course, the lower you go, the more this kind of squeezes in. And eventually, uh, when C is equal to zero down at the very bottom, then, of course, you get just the axes themselves. So it's a messy picture, <laughs> right? But um, the pictures are all, the individual cross sections here are all hyperbolas until you hit the xy plane and then they're, it's, it's like it's a hyperbola, it's like it's a hyperbola where they've squeezed so much they actually just turn into a couple of right angles, namely they turn into the axes, yeah. So in this case, how do you know like the cross sections are, are like hyperbolas? Because, uh, so I'm just citing Algebra 2 here. So this is an old fact from Algebra 2 that this is a hyperbola. Uh, maybe you don't remember that from way back when. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, you might want to, you can Google it or, you know, Khan Academy or, you know, whatever. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's a hyperbola. Um, is this a special hyperbola because of the... Uh they're all a little special, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> because I remember, like, the general form is, like, x. So tempting uh, to say it's, like, x squared minus y squared or, you know, ax squared minus by squared. Uh -huh. That's Those are hyperbolas that are uh, with axes that are either along the x-axis or the y-axis. Oh, okay. Right? But there's no rule that's... I mean, if you take a hyperbola and rotate it, all bets are off. So, in fact, the really general formula has a, uh, an xy term. So like ax squared plus bxy minus cy squared, if I remember correctly, is the general form for a hyperbola in the xy plane, and, and that allows for the possibility of rotations. This particular hyperbola, you'll notice, has been rotated what you might call 45 degrees, mm -hmm. right? And because its axes are, it's not, it's not, it doesn't have axes um, uh, that are um, that are the x and y axes. It has asymptotes. That are the x and y axes, yeah. Right. Right, so that x y term allows for rotations. Yeah. Okay, is everybody happy with these cross sections? Mm -hmm. Any other questions about this one? Yeah. Everybody good? So we wouldn't mm -hmm. have to like draw. Um, I got to draw know. some of. Or let's see, what did the question it say? Just to describe them. Oh, how convenient. Um, then yeah, yeah. Then just <laughs> describe. I mean, it, now let, let me say about about the word describe. Uh, um, describe says communicate ideas, right? So, honestly, pictures can be a very useful tool in describing ideas, right? So, um, if it were me, I would say take a take an attempt at drawing the picture. It is well understood that your picture is going to be bad, right? It's just try not to make it so bad as to be meaningless, mm -hmm. right? But so you know, the, I feel mm -hmm. like the picture I've drawn here is pretty bad. And yet, there's you can see some ideas. You say, okay, well, the higher you go, the wider the hyperbolas are, and okay, I'm gonna see roughly what's going on here. And then throw in a few words that say, in cross sections perpendicular to the z-axis, uh, the cross sections are uh, 
are, are all hyperbolas, um, you know, as as drawn, or something like that. Yep. Okay. Everybody happy with this one? Yeah. Okay, let me stop the recording.